Are you going to be late for work today? Dude, well, do they check if you're like super late? No. Because I've been late. I mean, if you, if you say that you're going to be... Well, how late? How I've late are you talking? I've been late only like five minutes, but... Dude, they don't give a shit. Yeah, they're not going to give a shit. Dude, this is, has to be like the chillest job like ever, but... Working at Sam's? Yeah. Because when I used to work at the bank, man, it was nothing like this. It was so strict. Don't you love it, working at Sam's? Not really, but whatever. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, you just go there, do your job, and then then leave. But that's I think most jobs are like that. You go and do your job, and then you leave. Yeah, but like this one, like I remember, like Dre was like, just like I'm leaving. He told Kylie, like I'm leaving. Kylie's like, okay, like they won't let make you like stay past your time, which oh, is weird. Like that one day where we had to uh, clothe, we had to do clothing. Yeah. And you fucking left early, and I was still freaking out because I didn't want to get in trouble. Well, that was only because I was just trying to figure out, like, okay, like, I need to take my lunch right now. Like, if I if I don't leave right now, then I have to take a lunch. So, hmm. and then why take a lunch, like, 30 minutes later and then come back and there's nobody here? Good point. You know, so. I would have fucking stayed, too. That's the, best. That's the worst part. Yeah. All right. So, you want to start? Yeah. Cool, because we're already recording. Oh, really? <laughs> These high school boys and girls are having a hop at the local soda fountain. Innocently, they dance. Innocent of a new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. The Somewhat Recreational Podcast. Hi, welcome to the Somewhat Recreational Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon. You heard my voice around where am i three times at least three times already i'm the host welcome <laughs> today i have my good co-worker guest dane he's uh also gonna oh, he's today here he is what's going on everybody introduce uh, introduce yourself uh my name is dane pacheco uh i work for sam's club and somehow i met brandon and now we're on a podcast right now. Yeah. <laughs> Met through work. If you could describe yourself to the great, uncaring internet, like this is the first impersonation they're ever going to get of you. Uh, well, ever. I I am a Hispanic male. Well, you don't have to describe your you know, like physical. physical. I'm talking about like what you do. Oh, what I do? Shit. Oh, I do digital animation and I do... Groceries, like, too. I do groceries, you yes. Grocery. I do groceries and digital animation. <laughs> Um, it's a weird combination, but for some reason it works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any other interesting facts about yourself? Um, I don't play video games, but somehow I'm still in, like, I do animated stuff, animative stuff, and I don't watch, like, um, anime, but somehow I'm, like, drawn into animation. That's, like, the weird thing. Cause like when what? you do like when you do like animation and stuff like the people that you surround yourself they're usually into anime and stuff I'm not, oh, which, shit. which is weird. Like, how do you relate to them then? How I do you just, how do you grab a beer with them and I they just, start talking about anime? I, just, I, I I just listen. I don't really like engage. I just listen because <laughs> everybody's like, oh, like did you see like this new? I don't even know like Naruto or whatever. Right. And then I'm just like, all right, well, I make cool shit. So at the same time. You can cuss on here, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's. Originally, I wanted to start the podcast uh, and have it be PG rated enough. Yeah. For so the goal was to have it so my sisters could listen to it, but f- fuck that. We were eight podcasts, and it's kind of hard to <laughs> to start yeah. censoring. We do. We do. If you say anyone's name, though, like I mentioned, I mentioned. Uh, we did this one podcast where I think it's coming up in the where, I, where I'm putting the rosters and whatnot, mm-hmm. where we got a little inebriated, and we talked about people that we knew, uh, specifically me, a lot. Uh-huh. Um, and I said this one chick's name a lot. We're gonna have to censor the shit out of that <laughs> podcast, like you you wouldn't believe. Yeah. But so yeah, if, if I mean if there's anything else that you say. That you want censored so people can't catch you for that down the line. Yeah. Go on, uh, just let me know. Nobody knows me on this, so. People like might, a, people might, like, like down the line. Well, yeah, I know, but. 
like wow oh wait you said you hate uh white people on the somewhat recreational podcast in 2017 we're not gonna hire you oh really that's if you get like super famous i guess or something like that yeah yeah but do you see yourself getting famous down the line in computer animation in computer animation Mm -hmm. i just want to just if i'm successful then that would be the most awesome thing ever because you know i'm it's the only thing i'm good at and at the same time it's the only thing i enjoy but Uh i don't like the weird thing is i'm i'm an animator but i don't consider myself an animator you know Mm -hmm. like no sorry like not mm -mm, but like what do you mean by that what i mean by that is animation is my platform and in order to get my creative juices out i have to join a platform like same thing like you like if you want to talk to people and have it recorded you can just make a podcast or something like that yeah same thing with me like i'm an artist first but in order to like get my creative like juices juices out or to get something out i have to learn a trade or something like that and animation just happens to be that Oh, you shit. know what I'm talking about? That's, cl- that's, that's uh, why that's I. That's why I don't relate to like, cause like everybody in animation is, to be honest, kind of nerdy, and a lot of them oh, are kind of anti. I'm not call trying. Them out. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, <laughs> but you can tell like it's just they're like, really they really love animation. Yeah, and they don't have a lot of friends and stuff like that. Like Jeez. I said, I'm not being mean. Why well, a little? I'm, not, I'm okay. Sorry. They don't have. They they they're told me not, they're shitty people. They're not shitty people. <laughs> they're probably the most creative people I've ever met. But I'm just saying, like, you a need, lot of the people yeah. that I've talked to, like, their so their 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 social life is not like the pretty. Greatest. Yeah, they just play video games. And the weird thing is, like, I'm outside that bubble because I actually do stuff. Like, I hang out with people, and I don't. But I don't. Yeah. I hardly play video games or stuff like that. Well, but the reason why is that is because I don't see myself in like as an animator. I'm more of an artist first, so I'm kind of outside the loop and inside the loop at the same time. That makes the way you put it makes sense. Yeah. How like if you want to do something like someone like likes going fast, they're gonna get into aviation yeah. or something. If you like, yeah. If you like to speed, but you if. If you like to speed, then you'll be like what, like a drifter or something like that. But those people could see themselves not as but you just a like car driver it, or something yeah. like that. They just like a certain thing and they have to learn something in order. But uh, that's like with me. But I don't know. It's 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 pretty unique. But I don't know. I just make it work. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Is it weird working with people that have that you share no interest with? Though I imagine that would. Like, if I went to Sam's Club and no, it was into, like, the occult, I'd be like, well, I can't be a part of this. I have interest in everything that, well, like, they for... do. It's just I don't personally do it. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't go mm-hmm. home. Like, if, they, if they're talking about something, yeah, I can, like, have interest in it. I'd be like, oh, that's cool and stuff like that. But I don't really know too much about it unless I learn it and stuff. And then I have okay. to, like, you know, I can, like, engage in whatever, you know. You can talk about anything. Anything, yeah. Even like, if you don't, like, know anything about yeah. it. And I think that's, you know, I don't, like, what are your likes and interests when it comes to, you know, what? it's probably, what, video games? and Not really. No. I'm, I'm like you. I have a lot of friends that play video games, but I only, I, I hate the fact that most of my friends, they have, like, these giant libraries full of games that they never touch. To me, that's a waste. Yeah. To, to like, spend all this money on, like, a bunch of games just to never finish any of them. Yeah. So that's why I, I really I I got a PS4 just to play Final Fantasy 15 because uh-huh. it looked really good and I wanted to see what the next generation was about. I then got Persona and Persona 5. That's the newest one because I love turn-based games. And then I got Street Fighter 5 because dude I fucking love Street Fighter. Yeah. Regardless, and I think honest to God, if those were the only three games I ever had for the rest of my life, I'd be fine with that. Just because of how little interest I show in the broad spectrum of games. Like, I I literally, I only want these three games when I got the thing. That's kind of like me. I mean, I bought an Xbox just for Fallout 4 and then, like, a couple racing games like Forza. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really a huge game head. I used to be at one point. Like One used used to be. Yeah. Back when you had free time. Well, when I had a PlayStation 2 and a PlayStation 1, I had over 85 games. 
Fuck yeah. I had so I had every genre that you can think of for games. Racing games, action, adventure, suspense, whatever. We even I even had demos. What the hell's a suspense game? Like you mean like a like a horror game? There used to be this 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 game called Galarians. It was like on PlayStation One. It was the shittiest graphics I have ever seen. All right. But the storyline was perfect. It was like, but it was just made. It was just made too early in in the graphics game, I guess. But it was basically about a guy that. Fucking like, he's killed he's, shit. He's like in a memorial hospital, and they're doing all these testings on him. And the the dad owns the memorial hospital, and somehow they create like a supercomputer and stuff like that. And the supercomputer makes all these like genetic people and stuff. Okay. And the supercomputer is trying to figure out, like, trying to convince um, his name is Rion, convince sure. Rion that he is a com- like a genetic person Boy. but not a real person yeah okay. so like but the, the thing about this is the graphics were so bad and the storyline was perfect in my sense as a sci-fi thing mm-hmm. but i was like it was so hard to get through and plus the 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 crazy thing was if you didn't play the game a certain way you would never be able to finish it mm-hmm. it was that that's how bad it, it was, was it hard or was it just stupid it was hard because you couldn't you couldn't like test things out without yeah dying and like you had you ran on these fluids like if you ran out of fluid you would end up like self-destructing like these people were doing like genetic testing and they inject they would inject like these poisons or these supplements or whatever called like one was called nalcon and red and if that ever ran out he would just end up self-destructing so you have to get like so many uh of those vials and stuff Right. In the beginning, if you don't, then you can't finish the game. You'll just end up dying over and over and over again. And so, I was like, "This is just a, just a shitty game." But so what, does that? It sounded like a game you liked when you were starting to describe it, though. What does that have to do with? Uh... I liked it as a storyline, but like we're going back. To, that was more like a suspenseful thing because. Oh okay. Yeah, like a suspenseful game. Because you never but, knew when you're gonna yeah. run out of vials. Yeah, and not only that, but like when I had like I had like Nintendo sixty four games, like nice. I just. I like classic games. Like, I listen to like on YouTube this guy named Jontron. Yeah, yeah, and, dude. Yeah, Jontron. Yeah, and he has all these classic games, and he does like reviews on them. And I was like, you know, that's pretty cool, because like everybody, if you play Nintendo sixty four, everybody likes Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Everyone. Everybody. Oh, like yeah. the heist mode, like those those fucking weasels. <laughs> that is, I could play that game all day long, and. I guess they have this thing on PlayStation or is it Xbox called Replay? Action Replay. Action Replay? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking but it up on Amazon. I was like, oh, I got to get that. I think it's like Rare Replay. Never mind. Is it? It's, it's, it's something something stupid. Is it for both consoles or is it just for one? I think it might just be for Xbox. For Xbox? Yeah, because oh, Microsoft fine. bought out Rareware, right? Oh, really? Yeah, that's why uh, That's why there's no... There's never going to be There's no another... license to like have it for a certain console? Well... Uh, I want to a while back, like a couple months ago, they actually released. Uh, it was supposed to be the spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie called Ukulele. Yeah, I, I have you heard of it? No, I haven't heard of that. It's it's like it's like Banjo Kazooie, which ban you know what Banjo Kazooie is, I would hope. Yeah, I know who Banjo Kazooie. It's is. like a remake of it. It was made yeah. in Unity. I, I heard I heard it was meh, but you know if you ever wanted it. I was looking up like that. the reviews, like for what for like. Because, like, Rareware and, like, what other companies are there for... Like, who made Do- Donkey Kong Rareware? Flip 3-4? For Nintendo oh, wait, for 64. Rare. For, like, old Nintendo games. What was, like, SNES, the most popular it was rare. one? It was Rare. Rareware? But what was, like, the most popular ones? Like, who made, like... Um, let's go back even more, like, for Super Nintendo, Aladdin. Fuck yeah. Uh, Disney. Disney? The weird thing was, like, those games were so old... But they had like the best music composition and, and graphics for their time. Oh yeah, don't you agree? Oh yeah, they really they really stretched. The, well, that's a thing. They um, nowadays you can do whatever the fuck you want, just as long as you have the money, yeah, and the resource and whatnot. But back then they had like limitations, like you know, with the NES. Mm-hmm. Going back even further, um, they literally you could only play three tracks on it, 
and whatnot at any given time. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was a MIDI, but it was like something akin to that. So what one of the guys did is that they actually used white noise that the system, like the console itself produced, and they added that to it. So it was like an unofficial fourth track on the NES. Wow. So I think it's just, it's limit meaning, the reason why I bring that up is that limitations really do further creativity and whatnot. Yeah. Like, because when you, because you got to try really hard to think outside the box despite the fact that you need to have the box in order for your game to work. Yeah, because I think like, shoot, I was, I have like Disney's Aladdin and like everything is perfect on that game. Like the, mm. the music, the, the style of the game design and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, this is cool. And I don't know, like, I don't like, I just don't have enough time right now. Like I know like our coworkers <laughs> and stuff like that, they're like, hey, did you get, and it's like Jeremy probably Jeremy has a he brings his we have a coworker Jeremy named Jeremy. Probably, he yeah, brings his, Jeremy probably he brings his switch to work. He would probably replace his eyeballs with TVs for video games <laughs> strictly. Let's ask him. Uh, when when you told me about his obsession with Pokemon Go, I was like, Wow. Pokemon Go? Yeah. Uh, Did you tell me about it? He has an obsession with Pokemon Go. He was like I, super obsessed. I don't know who told me that. I don't know if it was you or if it was I think it was you. I don't remember Pokemon. I, I remember there's a lot of things. Oh Jeremy wait, maybe does. it was Reggie. We have a we have a coworker named Reggie too. It works in the hard a, line section. We have a lot of coworkers. Yeah, we have <laughs> tons of people. Yeah, but I remember when that came up, Pokemon Go. Now there's a park right next to where I live, that's super empty and stuff like that. And then yeah. when Pokemon Go came out, it was filled with people <laughs> and it was crazy because like there was like nerds getting laid for the first time because they'd actually the meet people <laughs> i don't think anyone got laid because of pokemon go Why i think you? they did because it was that's a weird way to get laid the community i mean raped maybe no 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 the, the community of pokemon go was so crazy there were just people like talking to other people like like you wouldn't even believe and and then it died out after like. And then it months. died out, yeah. But like, there were people like asking me, like, like, do you know where like the Charmander or Charizard or whatever? I played it for a couple days, but mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I, this is kind of just boring. I'm just literally just walking around collecting the same Pokemon over and over again. Well, that's why that's why you had to walk around. Yeah, we walk like my friend. I remember we were um, driving around, and like he like literally pulled over, like ran into a ditch just to get a Pokemon, and I was like. Dude, you're obsessed. Jesus. You are. I will tell you though, I, I was in I believe I was in California when it started to hit its peak and started to climb down. Mm -hmm. Me and my cousin Kainoa, we actually we lived in the Orange County area. And in Orange County, that's where Disneyland is. We couldn't afford to go inside Disneyland, but we could go into downtown Disney. And literally you could not walk three steps. On the main downtown Disney Street, without running into someone playing Pokemon Go. Oh man! It was amazing. That is crazy. And then I remember someone was shouting, "There's a fucking uh, Kabuto over here!" And I was like, "Kabuto? That's my favorite Pokemon! Kano, let's go!" <laughs> but I really, I wish they, I wish they tried harder on that app because I really wanted it to be a better, a, a think, huger thing. I think they did an okay job because they no. made like six. What? Four billion dollars in like a week or two weeks. Yeah, but weeks they didn't. They like didn't that? update the app. They didn't. They didn't strike while the iron was hot at yeah. all. Because I thought this is like where game development and design is going. Like it's gonna be something like this. Mm -hmm. But I was like, maybe but, not. Because like, no matter how much virtuality and stuff, like people are gonna want to play with a controller still. Like they're gonna want to have something well, that's even, not on their head. It wasn't even that. The UI was just garbage. Yeah, like, it took. Once, once you got over, I want to say the first 10 hours of Pokemon Go, of like just looking at the app and doing that, not counting the times we were walking around doing this and that, are freaking great. But after a while, the UI, I remember it being really bad to the point where it just, it was trash. Like there was this one feature where it would show a Pokemon that you haven't got yet. Yeah. And it, it had footsteps underneath it, right? And the less footsteps, the closer they were. But the thing is that every single Pokemon had three footsteps on it. Mm -hmm. And instead of fixing that, they removed that feature entirely. Oh. So that was already, that was a pretty shitty thing yeah. they did. But I just, I wish that they tried harder with it. I, I yeah. And I really did. I don't know if there was like different like remakes of the app that were not po like not Pokemon. I don't know if there was like. Like rip off. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, like... absolutely. Google Play is not monitored at all. Yeah. You could. 
You I, could uh, put a picture of a porn model, and you would get downloads. Yeah. That's how that's how unregulated it is, dude. But it was crazy because like, it was kind of it was cool at the same time because like everybody was like talking to one like one another, and you kind of don't see that nowadays anymore. Like everybody's just doing their own thing, like just random strangers like saying, "Hey, where's this?" and "Hey, where's that?" Yeah, it was. A yeah, good, it was um, a good like community thing, and I <laughs> thought that was cool. I, I just thought maybe these that. nerds would probably get some. So, get some tail. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, no one, no one got laid because of Pokemon Go. Raped, maybe. Right. <laughs> That's just the reality of things, right? I, Dan, I, Dan, are you a, are you an optimist or a pessimist? Am I an optimist or a pessimist? I am an optimist. I see. Really? Yeah, I'm not a pessimist. Oh, uh, guess what I am? Pessimist. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I think if you like, if you if if. I don't know. There's a place for all of it, too. I mean... What do you mean? If you're an opt... There could be, like, over-optimism, and then there's over, like, pessimism or whatever. But, like, it's good to find, like, a balance. Oh, you're that guy, aren't you? Yeah. You're the, you're the guy that says, why pick ketchup or mustard? Let's mix them both together. No. <laughs> That's you, isn't it? That is not me, no. <laughs> I, I am, like, more on just free will. Like, I don't get, like... You do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's probably how you get along with your coworkers, I imagine. Not not your coworkers, you're the people that you 3D animate with. I used to deal, well, the thing is, I used to deal with uh, a lot of coworkers that were narcissists. And Ooh. those people are, oh my God. Like, we had this lady. Um, Where was this at? This was at, uh, I, when I was a bank teller, before be I turned a- into a, a manager. A manager at San... You got to describe these things. People have never heard about you before. Well, I don't want to like put the businesses or anything in there. Okay, so you know, meaning, meaning, so you used to work at a bank before. Yeah, I used to work at a bank. I, I was a teller, and then I moved up to being a manager, and then... And then you left. Yeah, and cool. then I left. But um, to go to school full-time. But right. uh, at one point, I was at um, a branch that had like everybody was just like against each other like they were super narcissists they didn't give a fuck about anything that had to deal with like working with they just wanted to do their own thing and there used to be this one girl that was just a super narcissist and we used to actually we used to like tell her all these bullshit jokes and stuff like that and things that are not real and she would automatically agree with you so what? we would do that for fun. What does because, that have to do with being a narcissist, though? Because narcissist people think that they're always right, no matter what. Okay. I, I You're going to have to walk us through an example. So, like, I tell you, um, like, narcissist people, they're never, they never think they're wrong. Like, they always have a justification of what they're doing and stuff. Right. So you can, like, make up a story and stuff like that, and you're talking to them, like, hey, we were just looking over there, and... Um, this thing is like i don't know how to explain it it's kind of do you have any examples like i'm trying to think of like a good example like when i was talking to her like we were just talking about politics and stuff and we would just make up random stories about like just stupid stuff that is not even true and she would agree with it (laughs) okay yeah that sounds like that sounds interesting but like working with someone like that it's impossible to get something done because it's only their way and it was just yeah. it sucked because even if you had a good idea even if you had something like they would just not follow it at all because they want to do it their way and i was like Ugh. have you ever had to deal with narcissist people uh i sabotage a lot of narcissists actually yeah that's why i'm kind of a <laughs> i'm kind of a uh not very very highly thought upon character back yeah. at eagle crest um we had this video production class and uh, I thought it was great. The first two years of it, perfect. Last year, not so much because uh-huh. we they switched uh, they switched Raptor News, which was the school's um, television service, uh-huh. right? Like every single blah blah blah, you play a video. It used to be an after club activity, which I fucking loved. That I showed up every single Wednesday um, before the last class, before the last semester, I did a video production. In of which they merged Raptor TV with video production and made it one thing. Um, there was a good a good amount of them were shit posting funny guys, some of my favorites. I miss them a lot. They're very funny. 
did a lot of cancer jokes, a little too many. Mm-hmm. But other than that, they're pretty cool. But and then some of them were like actual <laughs> normal people, which yeah. were also very nice. But I want to say they were like two to three of just the most like again narcissistic motherfuckers ever. Yeah, and that's they so were weird. they were not fun at all to work with. But I I learned I learned in my long nineteen year old life that the best way to handle with people being stupid is to just let them be yeah. their own thing. Like, uh, we had... I remember there was just one kid. I, f- I still disagree with everything that he lives for. <laughs> he was, like, a, he was a chubby dude, and he did this one thing where he sang the Elmo song, okay? I forget what it was. I think it was for, like, after school or something. Mm-hmm. But he sang it, and I felt bad... Because I knew that the second that goes out, that it's not, I will, no one would like it, one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would hate him for it. The thing wasn't, the thing was is that not only was his singing like fucking shit, he also pitch shifted it. So it was like, like ear grating to the point where it was like, how do I, how do I, it's like, he was like, Hellmo's World, hi! come on down kids <laughs> except you take no no you take that which is already annoying you make it higher pitched oh I'm not even fucking so like around. chipmunk or something like that yes and it, there was no animations there was no video even it was just a still image of of the uh, of all the information right there while he's singing Elmo's world Elmo's world and I was just like why are you? so I came up to him and I was like why are you why not just use the normal theme song why are you singing he was like no it's Cause I can't use it, or also it'll get copyrighted. No, it won't. This is just student <laughs> news. No one's gonna give a shit. Yeah. And he was like, the teacher told me to. I was like, okay, well, hear me out. How about let's do something? You you want to do something different? He's like, no, okay, listen, Brandon. I know you think. No, he literally said this too. He was oh, like, Brandon. No. I know you think. I know you were there on Last Raptor TV, but you don't know everything. And I was like, all right, all right, motherfucker, sure. Wow. So it went up. Um, and to no one's surprise, uh, we had, I think every once in a while, um, the teacher would pull people out and they'd be like, Hey, did you see this new Raptor TV? What'd you think of it? Unanimously, everyone hated the Elmo part. It was just like half a minute of just, just the the bad. It was bad. Fuck that kid. Everyone hates him in that. Everyone hated him in that class from that moment forward and whatnot. And (laughs) the best thing is, is that. I even, the next meeting, um, the teacher put it nicely and whatnot and was just like, okay, so we had a lot of criticism. Because, you know, you can't, you, as a teacher, you can't say, like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> but is- the teacher the teacher actually said, he was like, okay, so we received a lot of criti- criticism for the Elmo skit. And I think you would benefit from hearing us out. Now, does anyone know how he could improve upon it? And I was just like, um, yeah, I'm just sad that we actually aired that. <laughs> and he fucking, he got pissed. Oh, he man. got actually pissed. And you know what the best part is? What? He refused to make anything else for the rest of the semester. That's the thing. That's the thing when you have deal with narcissists. If they don't get their way, they're literally out. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, we were all fine with it. We all hated him. Yeah, and I was just like, I don't, like, how do you, like, that only works. you work, with yourself? But that only works if you're, like, on the top 1%. Like, if you're, like, a CEO of the company or something like that. Because, literally, your way goes. Yeah, you, his, his you can only do that on a too. certain... Yeah. But I was just like, you know... But I read this book a long time ago called Mastery by Robert Greene. Oh, yeah? And, basically, it just tells, like... If you have, like, six people and one's, like, a narcissist, another person has this type of personality, you basically just work with it. Like, act like a narcissist. Or just kind of, like you know don't rock the boat with them so that you can like literally get along with every single um of your coworkers, and you have a different personality for them so hmm. you can literally like kind of like go through the whole because so develop a disorder <laughs> no like to just learn how to like what's their likes and interests and stuff like that and try to get on their level or their wavelength and stuff like that so it's easier to work with them if they're uh-huh. not the easiest people because okay the thing about when you work with the type group or whatever and one person doesn't like the other person the whole thing can become can toxic yeah, yeah, yeah become yeah. toxic and then everybody just leaves or everybody's just miserable there and that is like number one you, you, like 
you want you got to use like that. prison terms like look we're all here we got to like make this work <laughs> okay. you know we can't just like you know don just can't hate jim and stuff like that and we're right next to him and like nobody's looking at anybody like it's like bad energy it's just like all over the place so mm-hmm. you know gotta like just but that book was just telling me like you know just work with like people look with their likes and interests because narcissistic people they you know they like certain stuff but as long as they're in control they'll be fine so if as long as just you let them think they're in yeah control, as then. long as you just tell them okay you got this you know what to do and stuff you know i don't have to like you know you can still like be the boss and stuff and just put down guidelines and stuff but you just need to let them that they're let them know that they're in control and then they'll be fine uh, or it could this doesn't happen all the sorry. time like that doesn't happen perfectly all the time but if you're in a professional environment sometimes it does work okay but if it goes yeah. south you could just fire them <laughs> but i'm just saying like you right know, right you can just but yeah be honest, did you use any of those skills, meaning getting around uh, other people and whatnot, on me or any of our coworkers? No, like, I'm kind no, of... be honest. I'm kind of low-key at Sam's, because I don't have to, like, put on a show. Like, I was telling... Um, Reggie? Uh, Reggie and stuff, they're like, well, why did you leave the bank and stuff like that? And I was like, dude, like, the bank has their own politics. Like, mm. financial politics and stuff like that. And... They're like when you're talking when you're working at a bank and stuff like that, you're literally there's nothing but money. You're dealing with money, you're dealing with numbers, and you're dealing with a company with infinite growth. That's why when we go to the meetings at Sam's and stuff like that, they want you to get all these plus and credits and everything. They're like and they get pissed off if you don't. Well, you're not getting commission off those plus and credits. So you're making our managers and everybody richer because they're getting bonuses of ten thousand dollars or more. Yeah, but we're not. We're not. For, so we're doing the heavy work, but they're getting all the money for it. Okay, does, does that bother you? or like, No, what, I what just, mean I'm just that? aware of it. Okay. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of it. But like the thing is, like when I was working at the bank, a lot of the times like I would have to like compete with other people on sales and stuff like that. And it, would just, it just turned me into like a person that I didn't want to be. I'd come home stressed out all the time. Mm. And... You know, if you don't hit your numbers and stuff like that, then they'd always, like, threaten you about, like, oh, you're going to get written up and stuff like that because you're not meeting your numbers. And I was like, you know, this is just stupid. <laughs> and at one point, like, I told my girlfriend, I was just like, you know what? I'm good at animation. This is what I want to do. If I have to step down or sacrifice, I want to do it. Like, this is me. Like, okay. banking and stuff is just something to pay stressful the yeah it's just numbers and, and narcissism yeah and i was just i was telling reggie and there's like why would you leave that place and i was like dude it's not for everybody it's it was, not the pay wasn't worth it either i imagine it was you know i was making pretty good money i was making okay money but like and i had bankers hours nine to five every mm-hmm. holiday off but it gets to the point where like your quality of life is like good at the same time because you have all this time off and stuff but thing is like you're there eight hours a day you're there at prime time hours too you're when you have the most energy and you have the most you know whatever mm-hmm. you know the most energy and then you come home and you're all stressed out and you're just like what am i what do i want to do now and stuff like that now like sam's is doesn't pay that much but at least i'm a little bit happier you know i can just like mm-hmm. chill out and just do stuff i don't have like people yelling at me or stuff and i was in it for like long time i think it was like three or four years really I yeah didn't know you were back as in soon that as long. i when i was at wendy's the crazy thing was like i was about to go on my break at wendy's mm-hmm. and the ceo of a, a private bank came in and i was just bullshit with him like he, i think he ordered a cheeseburger and at that time i was like really into working out and i was like dude do you know how many calories that that, that thing is he's like you count calories dude you're so young and I was just talking to him. He's like, hey, man, can you work a day job? And I was like, yeah, I can work a day job. He's like, are you in school or something like that? And I was like, uh, I'm trying to get back into school and stuff. And I was like, here's my card and stuff. Call me and um, we could see if we can get you hired. 
And I looked at the card and I thought it was like a marketing, like you know, and one of those agencies. Uh, yeah, I thought it was you just, just call just people bullshit. and try to sell yeah. them stuff. I thought it was like a telemarketing phone call company. <laughs> and then I look on the website and I was like, oh shit, this is an actual bank. So I was like making like seven bucks an hour, and then I called the guy, got the interview, and the crazy thing is you can't join a bank. Unless you have good credit. If you have bad credit, you can't join. Mm-hmm. Because you're under... Um, a lot of the banks automatically give you um, the ability to sell real estate. Oh, yeah? They give you that automatically, but you have to be licensed for it. But they give you, like, I guess, a document saying that you can at one point. And that's oh, why yeah. you have to check your credit. And plus, you're working with a lot of cash the same course. time so i came from like working to wendy's to like wearing all making, these making bank literally yeah literally make counting cash like i would literally at the end of the a month i would probably have about a million dollars go through my hands it has to be like i would be terrified daily it's not honestly when you're working with money like that all the time you don't even see it as cash you don't see it as pro- you just see it as product like you're like because, you know, I don't want to go too deep in it, but I would have like a hundred thousand dollars like on the side right now that I have to count, and I wouldn't even count it as money. It's just like I'm just counting paper. I mean, I'm an honest person. Maybe that's why. If it was, there was someone in the system, well, it's, not, it's not even that. It's just it's just it's just I'm so afraid of like one day there's going to be a hundred or like or like a dollar bill that for some reason has is worth like ten million dollars. That I'm gonna accidentally drop and not pick up, oh. and then some other asshole's gonna be like, "This is mine now." Yeah, and then that's that's it. I'm f- I'm arrested. I'm f- like on an FBI wanted list, and then my my life is over. Yeah, I will. Like, I'd be terrified of that happening. A million dollars is only about this wide. We're on a podcast. They, oh, it's only it's like literally like the, the size, size of a ta- of a small of a, coffee table. Small <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to. I don't it, mean to take you out of your immersion. If, if you stack it like five feet. That's probably if it's all hundreds, it's probably a million dollars. Just God, you ever look at that? And just say like you could live off of that for a decade if you played your cards right. I could, you know. I never thought, to be honest, I kind of never thought of, of that that way. The only time I thought that is when Brinks actually came and I saw how much money they were carrying, and I was like, damn, if someone stole this, then they would be. But I never saw it for myself. Like the weird thing was like, yeah, like when you're counting all this money, you're just, you know. And I've had people come in that were, like, you know, dressed like average Joes and stuff like that, deposit million-dollar checks. Jesus. And they don't look like the corporate person at all. They don't look like they, you know, they have their own businesses and stuff. But the cool thing about it was I met a lot of interesting people, like super interesting people. That hopefully weren't narcissists. But those, no, no, no. <laughs> But those, that's the cool thing about the bank is you meet every single business there. So if you want to leave the bank and stuff, you can actually, you know, do it. They get a job with them and stuff because you have so many connections. But I got my connections with my second job with uh, my friend's business because I kind of just wanted to help him out. But how did you, how did you end up with uh, Sam's Club? Sam's Club? Yeah, because I remember you worked after I started working, right? I just applied for it. And the weird thing was, like, I applied I applied a long time ago, and I never got any bites or anything. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to school right now. I just need, like, a temporary job and stuff. And I have my second job already, so, like, and I make more money at my, my second job second than this job. one. I just need something consistent. So I applied for, for Sam's Club, and then all of a sudden – Three Sam's Club locations that I didn't apply for called me. The Lone Tree one, this one, and they're like, we want you over here. Can can you come over here at Lone Tree? And I was like, uh, no, I got to wait to uh, I gotta wait to see if uh, Joe's going to call me because Joe's the one that hired me. Mm-hmm. That Joe's going to call me back. And they're like, well, if, you, if he doesn't call you back, then we want you over here at Lone Tree. And I was like, okay, well, shoot. But the only reason why I chose uh, Southland, uh, what was the other one? The other one was the Abilene one, actually. But that guy, I wasn't going to go to that one. That guy was a dick. That guy was a dick. Was he really? No. <laughs> the only like... reason why I chose Southlands is because I talked to Joe first. Cause, and Joe was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. But this was before, this was before um, 
Lone Tree called me. All right. Like right after they said that the Joe wanted to call me back, and I was like, and then Lone Tree called me, and they're like, hey, we want you over here, and I was like, you guys are kind of far away, so I'm gonna maybe just wait for like Joe to call me back, and then Joe hired me right there, and I was like, cool. I th- oh god I remember Joe was also the one that did my interview and everything yeah how did yours go apparently oh, I fine I talked too much that it came to the point where Joe was like it was super I, I could, easy I could see it on his face he was just like shut up shut up shut up shut you know what all I did was just I looked at the window and I saw your guys scan and go and basically I just said you know what if there's a customer right next to me, I'll just ask him, have you heard about Scan and Go? And I guess that was That's the gold. You, fuck you. I guess that was the golden number, the really? golden message, because that's all they want to talk about is Scan and Go. So I didn't even know that they, that was their promotion. Oh, my God, really? Yeah. And so they're like, I remember what? Joe's eyes just lit up, and he was like, dude, we got this guy. And I was like. I swear to God, I told my fucking life story to him. Cause he, <laughs> no, because literally the questions he asked me was just like, all right, so there's. Has there any? Has there ever been a situation in your life where you had to direct something and you had to put it all together? And how did it go? Did it fail? What could you have improved on? And I was like, these are such big topics. I I think for like half an hour, I was just telling him about my video production times. I don't think I told him about Shit Boy and the uh, and the song, but mm-hmm. I did tell him about um, the time I had to put together like a short film and whatnot. And I could just I could just see like I want to say for the first like five minutes. He was just like, oh, okay. And then the next 10 minutes, he was like, oh, okay. And then the, the next 20, he was just like, okay, See, so shut up. that is like corporate talk right there. You know how they talk a certain way? What and do you mean? You don't know what corporate talk is? No, like, yeah, I know. They're but like, like, like when he said... Yeah, like the, the editing. You know who does that, actually? Kylie. Really good? Kylie does it, but there's someone that is even better. Who? Lacey. Lacey, yeah. yeah. Lacey right. does corporate talk way better. And I understand... She's so I under I was like I understand it like corporate talk makes you get promoted, hmm. but you don't the, the problem that people have with corporate talk is it's always fake. Oh yeah, and people think like you're a fake person because you're always talking that way. Like, come on, team, let's go, team. If we, we, we got teamwork over here. Teamwork, Sam. Can we get twenty scan and goes right now? Let's go. Yeah, just oh, it's fuck. it's that just that. That type it's that of, fake shit. Yeah, I and, hate that fake. Like if someone if if Kylie came up to me one day, I was like. Hey, Brandon, can you do me a favor? Can you get me, like, two scan and goes? And if she said it in a way that was, like, not, as not like, fake or whatever, I'd be like, all right, well, I guess I'll start actually giving a shit about my job. Yeah, it's a universal talk now, and it really pisses me off because yeah. I remember at the bank, people used to do that all day long. And you <laughs> Can don't... we get $20 billion Yeah. Today? No, well, I don't know about that, but, like, <laughs> they would, they would, and you don't know who's a real and a fake person. Like, yeah, it's, at least... At least with that Sam's, it's like super obvious, kind of. Yeah. Like Reggie's real, I would hope. Reggie's real. Reggie's uh, real. Joe's real, I think. Joe's Carlton, real. Carlton, he peters for me. I love him to death. Carlton is the OCD man. We have a we have a manager. <laughs> well, we have a manager. His name's Carlton. He reminds me of the unfunny black guy in like a in like a late Nicktoons thing. You know, because he's always like <laughs> the the stupidest thing he ever said to me, and. Um, in the off chance that one of the, that he's actually listening to this, Carlton, you're my favorite manager, hands down. But he said to me, he was like, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, come here. I got a joke for you. So one time, my daughter quit her job. And I told her, <laughs> he talks like that, right? You, like, you can uh-huh. verify he talks like that? Yeah, he talks like and that. And he's like, he talks really kind of soft-spoken, too. Mm, so I said, I said, you are ATW. And Brandon... Do you want to know what that is? It means that you're allergic to work. Nah. And I was like, all right. I was like, oh my God. I was God. like, all right. You know what? That's, I, that's, I, I laughed and I was like, haha, good one, Carlton. And then I walked away. I got caught by him. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, that I is, love him to death, dude. Yeah. He's I got caught favorite. by him so many times by having my headphones. Yeah. You just, you just. And that one time where he's like, hey, good to see you. And I was like, hey, Carlton, can I get a radio? He's like, sure you can. By the way. No headphones. <laughs> Great to see you. And I'm like, oh my god, dude, is there a script? But is there a telephone? I, I you swear to God, he like reads that? off a script like before yeah. he says anything. But he's so chill. Like I have, like oh my god, I got yeah. caught walking around. I got caught talking to other people, and he's just like, how's your area? Like if it was any other boss, they would be like, 
I was like, dude, I would have been written up, fired, and stuff. But the thing is, I'm not, I'm not doing that on like the only person I really talk to is is uh, Kylie and Reggie because they're right next no. to me. And me? Why would? Yeah, and you. <gasps> but no, I'm, I'm talking about like when no, it comes to my department because yeah. they they pass by all the time. You're. No, I, I got you. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fucking around. You're the. I'm real, so I'm just. I actually joke. You're the. You're the comedy guy. Hey. You're if I want to laugh. How long do you think I'd last at a bank environment? I, I'd give it like a week. You might last a long time. You know the secret to the secret to um, uh, banking is the, the people hire uh, the managers hire people with no skill set. <laughs> Why? Because when you have that skill set, you just want to do it your way. Oh, so it's okay. easier. So I would just have to suck up to a lot of people. Yeah, uh, they want you to. They want you to train. Be trained their way. Okay. That's why it's hard to have a senior teller there, and them stay a long time if the rules are shitty okay. because they've already had like good experience, experience and they know everything <laughs> and compared to someone that just got there don't know any skills and are like well we don't know what's going on so we're just going to adapt to it so was that you kind of in a way that was kind of that was me but i i learned you really learned quickly i learned really quickly cuz i had a really shitty boss his name was rodney yeah, and he was a, he was a psychopath. I remember he you was, telling me about him. He had a degree in psychology, and he was able to manipulate people with that degree. Like he was able to um, make people like cry and laugh. Within he an was hour. just able to run the system around your brain, literally. Like he can make you like make decisions and stuff. Like he would make you feel bad, like using certain idea, like <sighs> just by him talking to you. Yeah, yeah give me an example of it's, that. Because it's so terrifying. hard. It's so hard. It's it's literally scenario based, but like like he come up to you and he'd say, he'd he'd give you a sticker that says you suck and he'd be like good job. Yeah, like <laughs> no, he <laughs> that would was be a terrible like one, I apologize. you know I don't want to like he would leave for the day, and he would like put in your mind you're like okay, he would subliminally say like okay I'm leaving for the day, and then he would say like some certain words and stuff like that, but subliminally be like okay I'm gonna come back here at any time at any point. And I knew oh, what he was terrifying. doing. Yeah, he's like, I'll keep you on your toes and stuff like that. And he would just say all this stuff, and I'm like, dude, this guy is fucking a I would, super ego right here. I would fucking, dude, if I worked with someone like that, I would, I would constantly call, like, call him out on. You know, okay, how? how do that I was the reason it? why I, I smoked cigarettes, is because fuck? yeah, because he was stressful. that stressful. Yeah, I used to smoke because it just I was nice. like fucking. I would, I would, if he, if he ever came up to me, I was like, all right, so I'm gonna be coming back in a bit. Uh, but I'm going to be off for the day, but you never know. I'd be like, well, so are you coming back? Are you leaving? What is this? Yeah. I would probably piss him off after a while. He would just look at you. The thing is, he would... He would he, oh, my God. Is he really? Yeah, he would. That he would get to me. That yeah, would actually he would get just to look, me. He wouldn't engage the conversation. He wouldn't put his two cents in. He, he just, just stares at me? Yeah. What if would. I stare back and I'm like... But you got to remember, he always has the upper hand because he's the boss. Like, I, Oh, he'd fire me then, probably. Like, the thing is... Yeah, like, you have to really, like... But the weird thing was, he taught me, like, a lot of stuff. It was like a... It was like a... It was, a me- it was like an abusive mentor relationship. Yeah, it was like a dad that beat you at the Jesus same time. Christ. <laughs> That's not a good... Okay. But I learned so much from him, like, bank-wise. That's how I got promoted so fast as a bank, like, he, from a manager. Because he taught he me a bunch of shit. He must have liked you, though. He must have liked you, He must have... He liked me, Like, deep me, down inside, he must have been like, this He liked me, but man. he knew I was... I, I just didn't take any shit at that time. And, like, I was just like... And Jesus. I left, I left that place, and I went to another bank, uh, another location actually, and that was okay. Mm. And then I met this guy named Andy. Andy was a motherfucker. Andy was a motherfucker. That dude wanted to throw hands outside the bank. What was wrong with him? He was so yeah. pissed off because he was um, he was like constantly like th- like threatening me and stuff like that. What the fuck? Because he liked my coworker. My coworker was a Russian she hottie. Was, yeah, she was a Russian hottie, and he thought and he you was were mad like... that I was working with her while I was her boss. <sighs> so I was, and I had to train her. And he, he one day he so like we... got super mad at me because I told her something, and he was literally cussing at me. Was he a coworker? Yeah, he was a coworker. Oh, I thought he was he like was a like manager. Thirty-five year old bald fuckhead. You could probably fire um, him then because huh? you're the manager. You no, probably, I was assistant manager. You could have still got him and fired. I well, imagine. I had to contact. I had to. I had to report it, 
And once he found out about it, like, I remember I went outside and he was waiting for me. And this dude wanted to throw hands. What'd you do? I was like, okay, this guy is mentally uh, fucked. No, this guy is going to either get me fired. Uh, So I went back in there. And, like, I wrote everything down of what happened. And eventually, he I think he left. But we didn't have any, like, the fucking thing about HR is, like, you, if you don't have any, like, camera proof. Like, yeah. Yeah. Then they'll just, they, they made him have, like, a paid leave absence for two weeks, which is stupid. Came back, and then he quit. <laughs> and I was like, this this was amazing. And he used to death stare at me all the time. Like, I'd walk, like, next to him because, like, the bank's office was front and the thing is, like, where I used to work at, everything was bulletproof glass. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. It wasn't a ghetto place, but, like, oh, some... Oh, no, I just... Ever since some, I hear bulletproof glass, I'm like, there has to be a story behind that. Yeah, some banks just automatically do it. Okay. So, um, this was an older bank, too. So you're saying. So they... He had a... His office was right in front of mine, so he used to just death stare at me all the time. And he was... I know he was just saying in his mind, like, Fuck you. Fuck you. I just want to <laughs> fucking beat the shit out of you. And I'm just Fuck like, come you. on, dude. Come on, dude. You can't get past this glass. Yeah, man. Jesus. Kick your ass. <laughs> it's like not, good. But, good. And then on the other side is I had that person, that narcissist person. Right, the yeah. chick. And then I had this super hot manager. Her name was Megan. Hey. She was super hot and she didn't do anything. She was She was just hot. That was her. She was just hot. Thing. Her her um her husband was uh going to school at DU being a lawyer. She so all she had to do was just write it out. Because he was about to graduate and get a big giant do- job, so she just didn't care. She just I was out. pretty much running the whole thing, and I was like, I can't do this no more. So I left there and I went to another bank, and I was like, Fuck, this is even worse. Because the thing is, the banking system. So you went to three banks. Yeah, I was at Bank of the West. So what was wrong with the last bank? Because the banking system never changes. The system of the banks all run. Yeah, but was things. there any other like weirdos? Um, it was the third like the one who was like all right this is it. It was super old. Like, I worked at this one bank that had innovation, everything. Like it had all the apps. It had, it had air every... conditioning. It had, well, not like, like that. <laughs> not like that. But like when it came to like your services and stuff, it was all up to date. And then I went into like Bank of the West, and that was like literally, um, um, what was it like stepping back in time. Christ. Yeah, because it's like the Flintstones old. age, but yeah, it was crazy. So would you would you have preferred if you could go back to a bank? Would you prefer working with the guy that's psychopathic, but you learn a lot from him, or the coworker that wants to kill you for talking to someone? No, I don't ever want to go back. Yeah, but if you had to choose, if I had to choose, I had to choose nuns. <laughs> to be honest. Oh, you're th- come on, pick one, pick one. If to choose a psychopath, I would really? probably. Now that I know. What's what, what's expected? Yeah, what's expected? I'd probably choose that person, but that's still Wait, which one the, the the one that's like uh, psychology. Okay, yeah, that one. All right, I would probably choose that one because I know how to work with that person now. At you don't know time. how to work with a guy that wants to punch you in the mouth. Well, you can't work with that guy. I mean, you gotta <laughs> like, you know, if you want to give him some files and he wants to swing on you, you might, you might try to have to duck. Weave. Yeah, you might have to bob and weave and be like, here's a. Here's a document right here. <laughs> Quit hitting me. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I guess it's... Uh, yeah. Do you have any last comments, questions? I feel like we covered a lot of ground. We covered banking, uh, 3D modeling, video games. Um, uh, I know we didn't do any hypotheticals or anything like that, but maybe uh, that maybe might be season next, two. Maybe, maybe season next two. time, <laughs> but who knows. But This, uh, this is just a, a tester pilot for the Dane parts of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. We'll come up with better hypotheticals. Right, right now it's it's good. It's we did good though because we got to cover the uh, your history, yeah, and what it's, what it's like to be a banker, yeah, and whatnot. So, but is there any closing monologues or closing testimonies? No, or? I think that's it. I think we got everything good. Nice. Yeah. All right. So if you're if you're good with it, would you like to hop over to the next part of the podcast? What do you mean? The somewhat. I mean, no, not the this week's recommended. Do you know? How, do you know what this week's recommended is? No, I do not know. You don't know what this week's recommended is. It's where ah oh, fuck, what was it? Okay, no, I remember. It's where <laughs> you don't even know. Shut up! This is my podcast. <laughs> okay, it's where you recommend 
a movie or a book or something, just anything that you want the audience member after they're done listening to this podcast to go check out for themselves. Um, I can go first if you want some time to think. Yeah, go first. Okay, so I recommend playing Third Strike. It is the best fighting game ever made. That's Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. I main Yoon on that. So if you ever want to throw down in public, bring a copy of Third Strike, two controllers, PS3, I think it's on PS3. Not PS4, because uh, that would be too uh, obvious. It'd be too easy of a $10 to make out of my wallet, apparently. But bring that. We'll throw down anytime, anywhere. Bring a TV, too, and some place to plug all the shit in. You got, you got to bring a lot of things to throw down in public. Not, like, throw down, but, like, controller-wise throw uh-huh. down. So, yeah, I recommend getting good at Third Strike and then fighting me IRL. That's what I recommend this week. For me, I guess for the animators <laughs> out there... Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably look up Octane Render. Um, basically, it's just a render engine that does photorealistic reali- editing. So, like, if I took a picture of you hey. and then I designed it in um, 3D, mm-hmm. it would look pretty much the same way as the picture. Wow. Yeah. Like, you could, like, 3D model it and everything? It would, it would be photorealistic if I did it the right way. But I, the thing is, just check out Octane Render. That's probably the best render that you have that's the high-speed capability for your computer, whether if you have a laptop or a desktop. I would look at that. And, yeah, see what – they have a free trial and everything, so. Does it make it it like a model or – No, whatever – What do you mean? You – a render engine is – so whatever you create, it's going to render it photorealistic instead of like – because there's different types of render engines, physical, standard – and then there's Octane Render, which makes things super high quality. Like, if we could design something like this, it would look exactly like this, except it'd be digitally designed. So it's just taking a picture then? No, it's just it's rendering it's it not... photorealistically instead of. Why not like... just take a photo then? Huh? Why not just take a photo? Fo- like, why would you ever need a like a realistic? Because image? if you want to animate something, and you can't animate a photo. Like, like if What's I wanted this to move like left your to the right, than a photo, then because it sounds like you're just taking a picture and putting it on a render. No, it's making it photorealistic. Wait. So if you wanted to <laughs> animate it photorealistic, like if I wanted to move this plant that's over in the front over here, do you to mean left Photoshop? Because right. I, I think people know what Photoshop. Just is. check out Octane Render. All right, I'll, I'll do that after this, so I don't sound like an idiot next season. Okay. <laughs> Fucking hell. It just sounds like you're just telling them, like, check out this stupid, like, thing that takes pictures for you. No, it's not that. For our, <laughs> for the people that are in that circle know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, I guess I'm just not a part of the circle. Uh, I don't think so. Probably not. You yeah. probably can be if you if you look it up. Yeah. If I dedicate my memory space to it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't see that. Okay, I, I guess, I, I guess I'm just not getting something. Yeah, probably that's probably you know that is the case. That is the case. It could be. I don't know. Cause it just sounds like you're just taking a picture and you're just rendering it in a pic in a picture. I can show you on your computer later. All right, <laughs> that'll be season two. Yeah, season two will be de- we'll do a tutorial of just what was it called again? Octane render. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're any good. last words? Nope. That is it. We are well, out. We are outy. I have. Oh, I'm gonna be late for work. What time is it? Now. A runabout. I'll steal it! No one will ever know! Hey, we're getting in a rut. No one will ever know! No one will ever know! 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Haven't been thrashed enough yet, eh? You're shitting all over everything today I'm not in my house. shitting all over anything. What are you talking about, dude? Dude, you gotta stop. I open my doors to you. And you harm... <laughs>